Hello and welcome back to Auto Street Auto Reviews. Today I'm back in Mercedes-Benz and McKinney reviewing this. 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, a vehicle in dire need of a refresh. And this year we have one, new bumpers, new headlights, same motor, it's been tweaked a little bit, but it does make the same amount of horsepower. But most importantly, <clears throat> the infotainment system, which has been redone. But without further ado, let's break this vehicle down and complete a review. Now up front is where we're going to see the most amount of change for the 2024 model year of the GLC. And it's much needed because ever since its debut in 2015 for the 2016 model year, the GLC has pretty much been the same. They just tweaked the headlights, tweaked the taillights, and uh, gave it a nicer infotainment system as the years went by. And that was about it up until uh, this year with the 2024 model year. Now we still get a sort of winged grille, but we have Mercedes-Benz 3 pointed star diamond imprints in the grill and i think it dresses up the car a little bit more now keep in mind that this grill is exclusive with the amg appearance package which this vehicle has and i'd say that's a necessary option because it takes the fender flares on the side of the vehicle and turns them from plastic into metal and also paint matches them which is absolutely necessary because i feel that the plastic fenders make the car look cheap and quite frankly this isn't a cheap car so i don't understand why anyone would want to make their premium vehicle look a little bit less premium than it actually is. We have the fat three-pointed star, which does house the module for the radar cruise. And we also have the smaller three-pointed star above the larger one. Now below this star, we have a front view camera because this vehicle does have the driver's assistance package, which gives us a 3D camera system as well as a top view, also very necessary. Biggest improvement for the 2024 model year is gonna be these headlights, the uh, regular strip with the two additional strips and the two main bulbs. These are adaptive headlights, which means that based on steering input, the lighting is gonna change. So if you're taking a corner, you're gonna have the best illumination of the road possible. Lower fascia is very similar in Mercedes design language. We actually have a real grill, which is important. I hate when companies just put fake grills to, for them, the cars to look sporty, but these are all functional. We have a lower chrome piece because the vehicle does not have the AMG night package, which honestly isn't too necessary. I wouldn't really option it. I prefer a little bit of chrome anyways. And then we have the uh, vents on the side for aerodynamic purposes to increase your fuel economy. Now underneath the hood, like I said before, the absolutely well-performing Mercedes-Benz 2.0-liter turbocharged inline four motor, which produces 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, which is more than powerful for a vehicle of this size. Now, when you connect that with a 48-volt mild hybrid system, an electric motor that sits between the flywheel and the clutch of the 9G-tronic 9-speed automatic transmission, you get a 0-60 to 60 time of around 5.6 seconds. And this vehicle is rear wheel drive, not all wheel drive. So you do get a bit of a performance advantage considering the fact that this does drive the rear wheels. And quite honestly, in Texas, I'd say that the rear wheel drive version is the way to go. Better fuel economy, as well as the fact that it's just more fun to corner in. Not, the, not that you would be taking ludicrous corners on back roads uh, by any means with this SUV, but I, I would say that for in terms of your location, you should really consider the fact of whether or not you need 4Matic or not. I would say that this motor has performed really well. I've seen it over the years. I remember the original GLC 300 had this 2 liter turbocharged engine and it produces the same amount of power since then. Uh, you don't really need power increase, so I can understand why Mercedes-Benz didn't do that. One thing I did notice about this motor is that the downpipe is absolutely massive. And one thing to know about the turbocharger on this car is that it is a electric turbo, meaning that if I put the vehicle in sports mode, it's gonna spool up um, electronically to reduce any uh, turbo lag that the engine may uh, end up having. So, considering the fact that this engine has Formula One technology, I'd say that's a pretty good buy. We have the wheels in the side of the vehicle. Now, like I said before, this vehicle does have the AMG appearance package, and these fenders are the ones that have been paint matched to the car, and I think that is a necessary option. With the AMG appearance package, we do get a different grille, different bumper, uh, different wheels, and these paint matched fenders. 
as well as just a better looking vehicle. Now, there are many options with the wheel selections once you do select the AMG appearance package. Uh, these have, we have the uh, five armed aero wheels, which do technically help your fuel economy. These are 19 inches in diameter and 235 millimeters in width in the front. Now, since this is a rear-wheel drive variant of the GLC 300, we get wider wheels in the back at 255 millimeters in width, which is nice to see a staggered setup on a rear-wheel drive car, um, especially an SUV like this, something that's not really meant to be driven like a sports car, because most sports cars have a staggered setup, not a square setup. Now, if you did get the 4MATIC version of this, the all-wheel drive, then you'd get 255 millimeter with tires. Uh, all around the car, which is something important to note as well. In standard Mercedes fashion, we do have Keyless Go, an option they've, they've had forever, and I believe it comes standard on these vehicles now. So I have the key in my pocket right over here. All I have to do is slip my hand into the door handle, the vehicle unlocks, and I can open up the door. You can see that beautiful Sienna brown leather in the inside. Now, the GIST GLC either doesn't have the um, toggled option in the infotainment system to fold the mirrors, but most vehicles that Mercedes makes that do have keyless go, uh, the mirrors should fold in. One thing I don't like about the side of the vehicle is this plastic side skirt. I wish it was paint master, just not there. It doesn't really need to be protruding out like this, but I guess Mercedes decided to make a design choice. It could also be for aerodynamics. I'm not an engineer, so I'm not one to comment about it. I just don't prefer the way it looks and you can't really take it off. We don't have the AMG night package, which is something I would say you should also not spec on the car, uh, which means that we don't have this chrome piece blacked out. And that's a good thing because even if you did get the AMG appearance package, you can't black this piece out. Therefore, I'd say that not getting the AMG night package really helps with making a more cohesive design uh, in making the design flow of the car a little bit better. Fuel economy is honestly quite good. We get 27 miles per gallon combined, which means 24 in the city and 32 on the highway. And this is because the car is rear-wheel drive and not all-wheel drive, so it's powering less wheels at one simultaneous time. And quite honestly, I'd say that that's just an upside of having a rear-wheel drive car, besides the additional performance gain in corners. Keep in mind that you do need to fill up with at least 91 octane, uh, but that shouldn't be an issue because you are driving a Mercedes. And here we are at the rear end of the GLC 300. You can see that there is no 4MATIC badge on this side because this is not a 4MATIC vehicle. This is rear-wheel drive and my preference for the car, honestly. It's not super heavy. You don't really need all-wheel drive. You also don't need off-the-line performance. It gets to 60 fast enough. Plus, I don't know who you'd be racing in your GLC. Also, you get better handling in the corners because naturally rear-wheel drive cars just perform better in corners, as well as the fact that we get better um, fuel mileage, which is also important in an economy luxury vehicle. We do have the GLC 300 badge in chrome, as always, and the Mercedes-Benz three-pointed star, which is also necessary. I don't understand why people debadge their cars. I think that it looks pretty good as is. Now, for the 2024 model year, we do get refreshed taillights, and these are LEDs, and honestly, they look pretty beautiful. Besides this, I'm happy we don't get this little chrome trim piece that Mercedes likes to put right behind the tailgate. And honestly, I think that just helps with the overall cohesiveness of the design of the vehicle. We get sharper bumpers this year, which I've noticed as well, as the fact that the exhaust tips are still fake. Completely blocked off, there's a plastic piece that blocks it, and I don't understand why. One thing that you do notice with the rear bumper, however, is the sensors for the parking system, and you can actually change how sensitive they are, so you can back up into tighter spaces without hurting your ears too much with all that beeping. Now, this is all chrome because we don't have the AMG Night package, but that's not an issue whatsoever. Once I open the tailgate, you can see that we have a very spacious trunk. This vehicle does not have a third row and cannot be optioned with one either. You'd have to get a GLB, GLE, or GLS if you want a third row in your Mercedes vehicle. But nonetheless, let's get started with a trunk test. Absolutely beautiful. Like I said before, the, the GLC has never disappointed in the trunk test. In fact, I might even be able to close the trunk. Yes, I am closing like so. Absolutely beautiful. Open it back up. You can see that it is indeed a trunk test pass. Now in here, I can actually fold the second row seats down with a switch, which is something I honestly really like. Well, switch to actually open the latch, you just have to push it down, which is not a bad thing. Unfortunately, however, I can't fold these seats back up 
which is a little bit sad, but oh well, we still have a little ease option. One thing I also like about the trunk of the GLC is that we have a tonneau cover with a little track system so that it doesn't start bending, which is a nice feature. I haven't seen that in a vehicle yet that I have reviewed or even been in, which is always nice. One thing I like about Mercedes-Benz is that they also give us a first aid kit in every single vehicle, which is always nice. I uh, used to have to option that and pay extra for it, but now it is standard, which is always great. All right, getting into the rear seats. I have the front seat set to my desired sitting position in a comfortable spot. Closing the door, you can see this beautiful sienna brown and black MBTEX imitation leather. And quite honestly, I'd prefer taking the MBTEX over the real leather because one, it doesn't wear down too much over time. Two, it smells really good. And three, it just looks really good. You can see that this, you wouldn't be able to tell this was fake leather unless I had told you. And that's something I always liked about MBTEX. Now, in terms of seat comfort, I like the positioning that I'm in with my, my torso to my legs. I also like the fact that I I have a decent amount of knee room and this panoramic sunroof really helps with reducing this claustrophobic feel that we do feel in some mid-sized and small-sized luxury SUVs. Uh, I like the fact that we finally do have the ambient lighting. It's an option that you have to spec on the car and I'd say it's well worth it. Uh, we do have the Burmester 3D high-end surround system, which is an always important, it's, it's, it's always an important option to get. Uh, I wouldn't skip out on it whatsoever. Burmester makes a really, really good sound system. I've been using it for a number of years now and I have no complaints. We have lock and unlock switches on the door. Finally, we have a metal door handle, a metal grab handle and the Burmester 3 tweeter right over there. We have two climbing control vents but no option to actually change the climate control for the rear that's all controlled through the front unfortunately but uh, besides that we do have a little hook for a coat hanger and a grab handle as well as a reading light which does feel really nice it's super clicky uh, which I always like otherwise there isn't much in here besides this little armrest always works really well a little pen holder but no cup holders evidently which is interesting uh, it seems that there's uh, a few slots here to actually put those in but i don't see a uh, place to actually put drinks which is kind of sad because i would be assuming that you're hauling people in here and not dogs or just extra stuff but that's not up to me let's get in the front and uh, i'll show you all the fun that we have going on up there now here we are in the interior of the glc 300 for the 2024 model year and quite honestly it is a nice place to be now, if you are a Mercedes fan, you'll see that this looks awfully familiar and you'd be correct because this is essentially a C300 interior that they've thrown into this with a better steering wheel. Now, this one's flat bottomed, has nice sports grips and has the, uh, the winged infotainment system features. But let's, let's start the car because it is rather warm in here. We get this nice little startup chime, the AC starts flowing, and it is a lot better to be in here when the sun of Texas isn't boiling down on you. Now, this car has been freshly PDI'd, which means that none of the screen features have been, you know, peeled away. But I have reviewed this exact infotainment system in both the S Class and the C Class that are reviewed. So if you do are if you are interested in the interior uh, infotainment system features, then uh, I'll put the links up there in the top right corner. But without you know, getting too much in depth with this infotainment system. Uh, one feature that I did notice that's new uh, with the GLC, in fact, with this, is that we get the ambient lighting feature, which wasn't a very well-known option back then with uh, since 2016 up until 2022 and 23, but we do actually have ambient lighting in this vehicle now, which is uh, essential in a Mercedes vehicle. We have the uh, haptic sunroof feature now, so I can just slide my finger down and the, uh, the sunroof will close by itself. Uh, I'm unsure as to why Mercedes hasn't switched to an electronic rear view mirror, but we do have the regular one. Same um, drive select system on the right, wiper settings on the left, super easy to use, super easy to read as well. Uh, I just wish that they were metal instead of plastic because this is a $60,000 vehicle and I would like metal switches. Now, we do have the uh, driver's assistance package, which means we get a head-up display and that can all be changed in the infotainment system. And quite honestly, it works really well. Super simple. It shows you the speed limit, your current speed, and if you have adaptive cruise set or not. Adaptive cruise is set with this lower one right over here. This left top wing uh, controls the driver and speedometer 
monitors uh, settings and the top right controls the main infotainment system and then we have our music and call features on the right door handle we have the uh, haptic seat settings adapted from the mercedes s-class when it was first debuted honestly it works really well do i do miss the uh, actual moving one we have heated and ventilated seats with three memory settings which is always nice lock and unlock switches and that is pretty much it uh, center console we get two cup holders decently sized one USB-C charging port and a wireless charger, which can be a little bit finicky at times, but if you get it in the right placement, then it'll be good. It just isn't super fast. So if you do need a fast charging, then you can get um, the USB-C connection. Speaking of the USB con uh, connection, we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is always important. Now switching into the vehicle drive settings, I have all of these um, options as well, and I can actually change uh, the drive mode from here, which is always great. Parking sensors, I have all of the camera settings I want at hand. The 3D surround view stays open no matter what. And we also have this augmented reality type of uh, setting as well, although I do prefer the front view camera no matter what. I don't trust these 3D uh, views too much because I do have mirrors. Now, the interior is really good. The Sienna Brown uh, and the black MB Techs are always great. Um, super well finished. I do like the fact that Mercedes has stepped up their in interior quality for 2024. Um, they were, you know, dipping down in the last few years, but they've definitely gotten back up. Uh, we have the MBUX voice assistant by saying, hey, Mercedes. Hello, I'm Mercedes, your voice assistant. Would you like to know more about what I can do for you? What is the temperature outside? The outside temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's about all it's good for. Thank you, Mercedes. Anyways, going back to the vehicle settings, again, infotainment, super easy to use. Uh, I really do like the interior of this. We get the open pore brown wood. And besides that, there isn't too much to actually know about the interior. So let's get on with a drive. Here we are driving the GLC 300, and quite honestly, it is not a bad driving vehicle whatsoever. It handles impeccably and it gets up to speed really well as well. Now, the stiffness of the suspension isn't very harsh either. Uh, this doesn't come with air suspension in any trim level or configuration that you get. And quite honestly, I don't think you need air suspension either because this is more of a vehicle you take out in the suburbs and in the city in comparison to on the freeway, which is where air suspension shines the most. The steering feel is great the pick off the line is great and quite honestly i have no complaints with the way this vehicle drives besides how much it costs for what you're getting you're getting a mid-sized suv for like 50 to sixty thousand dollars and it is it is a lot of money to pay for a crossover but that's just my take on it because the market for all vehicles has been inflated and there quite honestly isn't fighting it um, steer, our turning radius is pretty spectacular, honestly. Uh, took that U turn pretty quickly, pretty easily, pretty smoothly. Getting back up to speed, no problems whatsoever. complete review of the 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. Now you're probably wondering what the pricing of this is with such a great package. Now this vehicle starts at 47,000 United States dollars, but the way this one sits, completely fully options, just not the formatic one, the all-wheel drive. It's around $60,000 and that is a big price, but I'd say it's worth it because if you look at the market, inflation's going on everywhere and 
you know, Mercedes trying to stay afloat, it has to mark their vehicles up as well. I remember when a fully spec one was going for around 48,000, but that's back in Seattle uh, about four years ago. So times have definitely changed, but this is a brand new refresh. Uh, the motor, the transmission have been used in Mercedes vehicles for about a generation now, and they've proven to be reliable. I've never had any issues driving the 9G Tronic. Um, I drove one 2,000 miles consecutively over a, a span of five days, no issues with the 5G Tronic whatsoever. And I know very well that this two liter turbocharged uh, engine is dead reliable as well. Suspension handles really well, I dampen really well. Honestly, it's, it's geared for a driver who wants to enjoy their drive to work or uh, a nice little weekend drive to get away. I would say in the mountains, but this is in Texas, so there aren't really many mountains here. But I would say you should drive down to Mercedes-Benz of McKinney to actually pick up one of these or anything else. They have two Mybox on the inside, a bunch of AMGs and, and a multitude of other vehicles. So a big thanks for them uh, to them for letting me review their vehicles here. Uh, and, and that is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please do consider subscribing and remember to keep on driving.